Hey everyone, welcome to this week's crypto update. So, to put things uh, plainly, we are in a crypto winter, in a bear market, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people during this time say that the best thing to do is just ride it out, you know, look the other way, focus on other things, and don't pay too much attention to your investments because, uh, you know, everything's going to blow over. Um, that is definitely not true. I would argue the opposite on most of those points. Bear markets, especially in crypto, are a time to be paying full attention to what's going on because the things that blossom during a bear market are things that are going to absolutely bloom during the next bull market, uh, things that are going to pay off huge in the next bull market, uh, and there has been no shortage of that in this bear market. So there have been major developments in crypto and also things that are not going to be as good in the next bull market. Um, for example, in 2017, we saw things like Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, uh, some other ones. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I want to say Cardano, but that actually made a big comeback. Uh, but there were there was no shortage of coins that really did well in that bull run and fizzled out in the bear market along with everything else, Bitcoin included, and then just never went anywhere near their 2017 highs. Um, that's going to be absolutely the case once again in the next bull market. There's going to be a lot of things that seemed like sure things, sure bets that are just not going to pan out. Um, so my goal is to not get stuck with any of those as much as I can help it, and instead to invest in the new, uh, in the new technologies and trends that we're seeing in this bear market that are going to be captured in the next bull market. So last week, one of the things um, that I mentioned in the Substack was that I think altcoins can go up 30 to 100x from their lows, wherever the lows may be. Um, and to kind of uh, put that in a different way, or to expand on that, I think that the ones that are going to give the highest gains are the ones that either are small caps or you know were developed in the bear market, were captured some trend in the bear market that just wasn't around in the last bull market or was underappreciated. Um, and those are going to be the real big winners, closer to the 100x side of things for sure. Uh, so I want to get to some of these trends, some of the things that are going to go out of style during the next bull market, which would be the equivalent of like a Litecoin or a Bitcoin Cash, uh, and some things that are going to be trending during the next bull market. Um, and those are going to be the, the, the investments I focus on from here on out, at least in this sub stack. Uh, so I want to go over one thing that's going to be out of style, I believe, and that is yield farming. So yield farming is essentially an incentive structure for people to buy into certain cryptos and this was really started by compound finance which is still around it's a legit project but there were a lot of other projects that kind of piggybacked off of this made their own version of it and it was a total nightmare once the the sell-off came around um, so it was actually one of the things that ushered us into the last bull market uh, but I think that it was overused and it was kind of abused to the point of no return at this point. Um, and that is because, you know, the a lot of projects that were out there that blew up in 2021 in a good way and then in a bad way, they were offering like yields on their coins where you'd actually buy their crypto and you could go to their app and you could stake their crypto or provide liquidity with it or anything like that and earn you know, thousands, in some cases, even millions of percent interest. And that sounds good to be true, too good to be true, because it absolutely is too good to be true. Uh, a lot of people actually did this. There was this whole section of the market called mercenary or DeFi mercenaries that went around with all their money, put it into whoever was offering the highest yield at that moment. And it switched like multiple times a day. Um, and then after the yield dried up, uh, it left everybody else that had that coin it really in the dust because there was hyperinflation. Obviously, if you're paying out interest in your crypto at like thousands of percent, it's going to hyperinflate the, the supply. And then once everybody's done sucking the yield out of it, they're going to leave and the coin is just going to plummet. This happened time after time in 2020 and 2021, uh, but especially into the latter parts of that 2021 rally in April. And then everything totally crashed in May and some of the things recovered, but most of the market did not recover from that. Most things did not make new highs later on in the year, even though Bitcoin and Ethereum both made marginal new highs. So that was uh, something that I think is going to go kind of out of style, even though there were legit projects that did this like Compound and Aave. They have since really backed off in a big way. They don't really do it anymore. 
because they saw the negative effects that it brought to the market. And I think it kind of comes with a stigma at this point. Uh, so cur like the, the cryptocurrencies that, that really relied on yield farming are, I, I think they're pretty much done if that's still the only thing they're relying on. The ones that have good underlying um, things like liquidity, total value locked, uh, that bring in a good amount of fees are gonna stick around, especially those ones in DeFi, like the DeFi blue chips, Compound, Aave, uh, Yearn, Uniswap, um, Curve. The, there's a lot out there that is still really good, but uh, yield farming as like an incentive structure, I think is done. And that is being, you know, replaced in a way by something else called revenue sharing. So that is uh, really something that I think uh, captures the ethos overall of crypto, because unlike the stock market, crypto projects, you know, developers, um, team leaders and things like that want people to be able to benefit from using their platform. So for example, there's one project called GMX that passes all of the, the fees that it earns and all those fees are paid in Ethereum. It passes all of its fees along to own, or the, yeah, the owners and stakers of their two different cryptos, which the tickers are GMX and GLP, and they're slightly different. So. Uh, GMX earns 30% of the fees that go into the protocol. So GMX is a is an exchange where you can trade leveraged futures, and every time you make a trade or uh, you swap tokens on that exchange, you pay a fee, and GMX gets that fee and it passes it along to the stakers of its tokens. Um, like I said, G the GMX token itself gets 30% of those fees, and some of them. Or some of it is actually paid in the GMX token, which is a little bit inflationary, but uh, a decent amount of it's actually paid in Ethereum because the fees, when you use GMX, you pay a fee in the Ethereum coin, Ether or ETH is the ticker. Um, the GLP token is the real innovation here. That gets 70% of the fees whenever someone trades or swaps on the GMX exchange, 70% of that fee goes to the GLP holders. And the way that GLP works is really interesting to me. Um, and I hope I put this clearly because it is a little bit complicated, but I'm going to try to explain it to the best of my ability. Uh, the way the GLP works is it's kind of like an index fund of all the coins that you can trade on the GMSX exchange. And that is USDC, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Uniswap, and Chainlink, and then a couple of other stable coins like DAI and Frax. Um, and the, the, the thing is with this, whenever you buy GLP, you have to buy it with one of these coins uh, because essentially, again, GLP is an index fund of the different coins. So when you buy GLP, so you buy GLP with Ether. Um, the Ether then goes into the overall basket of liquidity that is able to be traded on GMX. So you're supplying liquidity to the exchange for other people to trade. Meanwhile, you get GLP, which you can stake on the platform, uh, which is another just another way of saying you can earn interest on it by locking it up for a certain amount of time. And you, uh, you receive 70% of the overall fees on GMX. So the fees on GMX have exploded uh, since its launch in, in uh, last September. So it's been around for about a year now. Uh, and a lot of that year has been during a bear market, but still they are bringing in millions of dollars of fees per month. And I believe they just set a new monthly record in September for the amount of fees. I think it was almost $5 million in fees. So they're paying out a solid amount of money to these GMX and GLP stakers. And I think that this is a trend that we're gonna see a lot of uh, come the next bull market. And even for the rest of this bear market, I mean, GMX, the token is actually up almost 80% this year as of the time of recording. So, you know, that being said, there is still demand for this coin, even in the worst market conditions, probably since 2018, or, you know, maybe 2020, the COVID crash were pretty bad conditions too. Uh, either way though, the, the market conditions are terrible. The point is GMX is still doing well. Uh, not only as an actual product with their exchange, they're getting record high volumes, record high fees, but the, to the token itself, there's a lot of demand and a lot of incentive to buy it because you get some of those fees from a really solid up and coming exchange. So these revenue sharing tokens, I think that's gonna be another trend. It can't be abused as much as yield farming because if you're offering yield farming, 
you can essentially pay out you know whatever percent interest you want and in inflate the crap out of your token and really it's going to end really really badly every single time if you do that because the inflation is going to crush it you're going to attract the wrong kind of money and they're just going to leave you high and dry and the token is just going to flame out in this case if you are doing revenue sharing you are you know you're limited to what you can pay out by the amount of revenue that you bring in so you're more incentivized to build a solid app that offers a good service um, and you're also giving people a, a good incentive to buy your coin um, and you know you can't have like hyperinflation or anything like that the only way to do that would be to charge really high fees and then nobody would use the platform anyway so there are multiple really good things about revenue sharing um, and I think it's going to be one of the hottest trends as we go forward definitely and it's going to just catch fire in the next in the next bull market uh, so I'm going to try and get uh, at least one of each of these out every week um, and you know I've got enough at this point to make at least four or five weeks out of this uh, just pointing out trends that I see developing right now that are going to be winners in the next uh, bull market and a few uh, different trends that I think are going out of style and that are not going to pan out um, and that have a lot of bag holders at this point too that yeah the, the coins probably aren't going to make new highs during the next bull market so, so stay tuned for that thank you everybody for watching and I will see you again next week